Hi everyone, how are you today? I hope you are doing great. I welcome you to Maulana Ajad National Urdu University. As you all know, this is Dr. K. Nagendra from the Department of English, Assistant Professor. And today, I am here to talk about another important topic. I hope you know the importance of teaching language skills in English language teaching. How do we integrate skills? This is also integrating skills like what exactly we focus or we concentrate here. Speaking as preparation and motivation. Text has modals. Text has preparation and motivation. Integrated tasks. Here I wanted to explain you clearly Integrated tasks means the tasks which focus on all the four language skills, what we call them as receptive and productive skills. So, we usually in the beginning I spoke to you very clearly that it is really difficult without mixing up all the four skills to concentrate only on particular skill. That is why it is always effective like if we integrate all the four skills. So, we need to come up with a task which concentrate or which focus on all the four language skills. Let us have a look at this diagram of receptive skills. Type 1 tasks and type 2 tasks. First, lead in stage. Next, teacher directs comprehension on task. Students read or listen for task. Teacher directs feedback. And finally, teacher directs text related tasks. Similar way, like if you move on to type 2 tasks, teacher directs comprehension tasks, which is understandable. Students read or listen for task. Finally, teacher gives a feedback. So, this is the basic methodological model for teaching receptive skills according to Jeremy Harmer in the page number 271. The first and foremost thing which I wanted to tell you that is pre-teaching vocabulary. The next important one is extensive reading and extensive listening. I told you extensive reading is all about what we read it for the sake of pleasure, out of interest, love. We read magazines out of interest, just for the sake of entertainment. Similarly, when we talk about extensive listening, Suppose, if you would love to listen to A.R. Rahman's music or somebody else and even videos uh, like who is very good at English and that is maybe out of interest which is not academic and we say that extensive listening. So, let me make it very clear, extensive reading is all about reading for pleasure, entertainment. Extensive listening is all about we listen to it for the sake of entertainment and pleasure. Next, authenticity. This is also one of the important thing which one has to consider because there are plenty of materials available because as we are living in 21st century or digital era. So, one has to be very careful about uh, authenticity so that it would be very helpful for us and to improve our language skills. Next, comprehension tasks. Here, we need to talk about two important things. They are testing and teaching like whatever we teach and we should test. Appropriate challenge. This is also one of the important things one has to consider because when you go with a challenges that has to be appropriate to the level of students, otherwise there is no point. Suppose if you go with a difficult task and to the primary students, if they are not able to understand or if they are not uh, able to come up with, that is going to be vain. So, it is always good like if we go with appropriate challenges. Have a look at this productive skills diagram so that you can understand the difference between receptive and productive skills. Students have all the information what they need here, but teacher leads the task and teacher sets the task and teacher monitors the task. Teacher also gives feedback here. And finally, task related follow up. 
which is very important so that we can understand whether we are successful with our task or not. And if you come down, teacher sets the task and teacher monitors the task and teacher gives feedback. So this is the entire procedure in productive skills. This is the entire model for teaching productive skills according to Jeremy Herman, page number 276. Let me talk about writing. In writing, there are two important things which I want you to look into. They are coherent and cohesiveness. They are very important in writing skills. What is coherent and cohesiveness? Coherent writing makes sense because you can follow the sequence of ideas and points. But what is cohesion? Cohesion is more technical matter since it is here what we concentrate on the various linguistic ways of connecting ideas across phrases and sentences. Let me make it very clear, when I say that coherent, it's a sequence of ideas and points within words. And when I say that cohesiveness, it's ideas across phrases and sentences. So one has to be very careful connecting words and as well as sentences. That is why, like if you're a if you are very good at writing and you need to follow these two important techniques, they are coherent and cohesiveness, which talks about the connectivity between words and as well as sentences and phrases. Examples, pronouns, lexical repetition and synonym. So one has to be very careful when you go with the pronouns, using pronouns. And because sometimes people do repeat the names again and again which doesn't look good, but at the same time, selection of vocabulary is very, very important. Similarly, synonyms. So one has to be clear idea, like which is appropriate word, which gives correct and appropriate meaning. I know that because if you want to have this coherent and cohesiveness in writing, and one has to have an idea about the linkers in language. And here I came up with some examples which will really helpful for us and to write effectively. Addition, like how do we add things? Maybe by writing also, moreover, contrast, although, however, still, cause and effect, therefore, so, etc. Time, then, afterwards, organizing markers, firstly, secondly, and finally. Successful communication, both in writing and in speaking, depends on knowing rules. Knowing rules don't ever think about grammatical rules, but it's all about uses of linkers, connection between words and sentences and phrases. So if you are very good at using all of these, because they are very helpful when it comes to group discussion or when you give a presentation, or even if, if you start writing a report, these things are very much helpful in writing and as well as spoken communication. So one has to be very good about all of these. Speaking proficiency depends upon our ability to speak differently depending upon our audience and upon the we observe their reactions and respond to them. Writing skills depends upon our ability to change our style and structure to suit the person or people we are writing for. Here, one thing I wanted to explain to you, when it comes to speaking proficiency, we usually or most of the times we speak to face to face. There, there is a possibility and to take back our words and to replace with that particular vocabulary. But when it comes to writing skills, it's very, very important to talk, uh, to write, like what kind of vocabulary, the way of style and all these things. Because once if you put on paper, it's really difficult to take them back. And even if you want to pass the message with your writing, and you need to be good at using right vocabulary and the way you use a style. But in speaking, and it is also very, very important to know the audience. 
because if you want to pass the message and to that particular audience, you must be have a clear idea of those particular audience so that you can convey the message what you wanted to speak. Yeah, this is also one of the major problems with most of the learners. So I believe this LSRW skills are very helpful for us and to deal with difficulty of language. The first and foremost thing which I wanted to tell you that, that is improvising. Here students feel difficult with words and phrases. The second important one is that is discording. It means learners can't find words what they want to say. Yeah, I personally experienced many of the students. They had many good ideas, very good ideas in their mind, but they are, they are not able to express because they always fumble and they always search for words or appropriate vocabulary. Third one is foreignizing. Speakers use first language for pronouncing LT words. Here it means pronunciation because sometimes when I say that L2 words means second language. Final one that is paraphrasing. Learners face problems with lexicon. He means that like when we say that when we paraphrase that even they do face some problems with vocabulary or syntax, semantics and etc. Learners engaged in productive tasks can become very frustrated when they just don't have the words or the grammar they need to express themselves. I hope even you did experience the same because maybe in the beginning of days or as we just started learning English language, sometimes even each and every one of us, even I myself face so many problems like this because if I don't find a right vocabulary, a right word, I frustrate sometimes. So it happens with most of the non-native speakers of English. So it is very important to have a good vocabulary and which is appropriate. And at the same time, one has to be good at grammar in order to express freely and to come out of that frustration. Here, I wanted to tell you the two steps how to get rid of this problem. Supply key language. Being a teacher, we can supply a key language. Check knowledge of their vocabulary. Maybe there are many ways through which we can come to know students the standard vocabulary. So, here, when I say that, to check their knowledge of their vocabulary, like there are three important things which I want you to remember, that is grammatical, lexical, or phrasal. Step two, plan activities in advance. Plan production activities that will provoke the use of language, which they have had a chance to observe at an earlier stage. If we follow these two important steps, they will never feel frustration and because they will be having some awareness of this, how to use a vocabulary, grammatical structures and lexical and phrasal and even like suppose if we have some pre-planned activities that will help them to speak freely and naturally. This is one of the popular activities. Suppose if we take an example of engineering students or most of the professional students, they usually go with the project work because that helps them to develop their personality as well as even their communication skills. And especially when it comes to language skills, it is very helpful. Project work is a popular in EFL. It means English as a foreign language or ESL, English as a second language, teaching and learning too. Though its use naturally constrained by the amount of time available for its implementation. As you all know that it takes time, but still it is very helpful to develop all the four skills in language. Yeah, this is the biggest puzzle to everybody. I know that because it's very easy to give projects to the students, but how do we manage? Let me talk one by one so that you can understand what exactly or how we are going to manage with projects. The first one, the briefing or the choice. Here, I mean to say that selecting the topic, 
that depends on a teacher or student. If student is confident enough with his or her topic, they can come and suggest a topic. Otherwise, if students are not able to come up with the topic, they can sit with teacher and they can decide one of the latest topic or one interesting topic which is really like thoughtful and interesting. Second important one is that is idea or language generation. What kind of material or language which we need to make use? It's all about finding the sources of material. Suppose if you select a topic, then the second important thing we usually think about what are the sources which we have? Think about library or online or offline sources or any other, okay, whatever you feel comfort. So think about finding the sources of material like where we can generate this language and idea. The third one, data gathering. This is also one of the important tasks because we need to collect or gather data. It's all about, data gathering is all about making use of different sources. As I already told you that there are many other sources because these days many people depend on online or offline or library or smartphones, etc. That's up to you, whatever you feel comfort, you can suggest and recommend your students to make use of different sources. Let me give you some examples when it comes to data gathering, like that is media, internet, textbooks, and library. These are all the common sources like through which we can gather lots of information. Planning also one of the important things in managing project. Here, final draft model and chapter division. Suppose like if you come up with a topic and if you find some sources and afterwards if you are able to data collection, like uh, suppose if you are able to gather some data, the next important thing is it's all about planning. Like what should we keep in first chapter, second, third and fourth and all these things. So you will have a draft, then a you will divide a chapter division. We usually have uh, introduction and next maybe you can talk about the brief information about the topic which you are going to work on, then research methodology and even we can also talk about analysis and even we do talk about uh, like conclusion and suppose even you can also add some appendices. Next one is drafting and editing. This is very important because it needs a lot of patience. First draft, self-edited. Like once if you come up with a first draft and we need to edit it on our own, then you can also take help from some of your fellow students. Because if you think that they are very good at language, you just ask them and to edit your work. There is nothing wrong taking help from our fellow students, those who are really helpful. The next one is result. Aiming has been reached. Example, a big report. It means that finally you came up with a result. So here is the model. And the last but not least, consultation or tutorials. Teachers will need to be available as tutors, advising, helping and promoting students to help them progress. That is why teachers have lots of responsibilities that is why teacher has a lot of respect in the society and here like if you want to come up with a very good work teacher should be available all the time well so far we talked about teaching english language skills how we integrated all the four skills and here also we talked about all the language issues and how do we manage projects? How do we develop all the four skills in order to promote language among all these learners? I hope you had a nice session. And let us meet with another important session talking about uh, importance of English language skills. What are the main objectives of language skills? And, and what are the activities through which we can develop all these four skills, what we talked about in this session? That's the end of this session. 